The Everlasting Wonka, Chapter 5, In the Open Air. As Charlie walked through the crowds, he thought, Perhaps I should have allowed only a certain amount of people in at a time. People not only swarmed throughout the park, grabbing and gobbling, but men, women, boys, and girls pressed against him, asking him all sorts of questions, some of which were very private and personal. Excuse me, all questions must be submitted at the end of the day in writing. Thank you for calling and have a nice day was Charlie's stock answer. When asked about his secret of how the candy was made to last outside, he replied, Folks, candy is dandy, but silence is golden. And a little silence now and then is cherished by the wisest men. Charlie thought it best to keep them guessing. He smiled as he tried to get away from the crowd, but one final shot stopped him. Charlie, can you keep up with the demands of products like Mr. Wonka did? Charlie turned slowly, and from out of nowhere, like magic, there was a poof of smoke from Charlie's sleeve. All eyes shifted their attention to Charlie. In one hand, he held up Mr. Wonka's cane, and candy shot out of his other hand, just as an illusionist keeps pulling scarves from his sleeves. Candy sprayed all over them as if a global-sized piñata had just been broken open. When the people were busy with the candy shower, Charlie was able to get away, pushing through to take refuge inside the factory. Once inside, Charlie took a deep breath, still happy and excited about the opening. He rushed to the top of the main smokestack and peered out of a little window, just big enough for his eyes. They look like ants, Charlie said out loud to himself. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh, he exclaimed. What have I done? He raced back down the spiral stairs and announced over the intercom speaker system, Blah! All Oompa Loompas! Blah! Come quickly! Drop whatever you're doing. Meet in the front lobby of the factory. This is an emergency. Blah! Flap, 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 flap. Wee! This is not a drill. He slammed down the microphone, started to rush off, and then, in one quick jerk motion, picked up the microphone again and yelled into it, Thank you, that is all. Off he raced to the lobby, where he announced to them, We are in grave trouble. The people are behaving like locusts. The Oompa Loompas stared at him in confusion. Oh, you wouldn't know what locusts are. Um, well, uh... He searched for a word. Oh, I've got it. The vicious canids, or roaming winzels, and they are, they are ruining our garden. Several Oompa Loompas tried to speak up using the English, their English the best they knew, could, they knew how. Charlie heard the loudest one shouting, Sir, I've got an idea. His words were drowned out by the others as another cried out, this is their nature, sir, just like the children Mr. Wonka left in the factory. They are all full of greed, uncontrollable lust, blurted in another. With no respect, shouted another. Spoiled, injected another. Floodgates of indistinct chatter filled the air, murmurs of how badly people behaved on the outside, as opposed to the Loompa Land. Charlie felt as if he were losing control and nervously managed to pull them back together. He said, Okay, so at least we all agree. And we're all on the same wavelength of thinking. Yes, they all chanted in unison. Surprised, Charlie went back to the first one who said that 
he had an idea and asked, What is your idea? As the Oompa Loompa scratched his head, the scratching sound turned into the sound of a musical shaker, followed by a group of them hitting their bill bellies, making a boom-boom sound like a big bass drum. Then the rest of them started humming. Finally, they all broke out into song. Oh, we knew this would take place. These people are a disgrace. We tried this all before. They kicked, they punched, they knocked down the door. What shall we do? What can we do? We must come to the rescue. Help, help, you say. And so we must take down this nasty, orny, ornery crust, cuss. Aliens are what they are. We come down like a shooting star. Aliens are what they see. So let's go and set them free. We do not need them in our place. They are all up in our face. So, so, so let's go scare them one by one and not stop until our job is done. And with that, the song was done. Charlie applauded their performance and said, You are the best. Let's get out there and scare the taffy out of them. Hurry. Scare them away. Go, go, go. Be gone. Charlie went his way, and they went theirs. When he finally got out to the public address system, he picked up the microphone and blared outside the factory and proclaimed, Warning! Everyone, warning! The factory is being invaded by strange and dangerous alien creatures. They are all over the inside of the factory, and now they are coming your way, outside, towards you. All of you, run for your lives. Charlie smiled, set down the microphone, and headed toward the stairs that led up to the little smokestack window. With a quick jerk, however, he returned and picked up the microphone. Thank you. That is all, he said. Laughing manically, he raced up to the observation window, peeking out to see what was taking place. He hunched over and whispered, This is going to be good. A smile spread across his face as he watched people running around like crazy people. The Oompa Loompas scurried out of the factory, and when the tourists saw these knee-high men of different color, they screamed, hollered, smirked in fear, shrieked in fear, so loud that Wonka could hear them all the way up in the smokestack. The sight made him giddy. Even the official public police and security force didn't know what to make of all this pandemonium. Within 60 seconds, the crowd cleared out, not just out of the park, but out of sight. When the Oompa Loompas came inside, Charlie met them with a big thank you. They all nodded in response and laughed. Charlie said, I'm sure you're ready to sing another mischievous song, huh? Laughing in unison, they returned to their, to their own areas of the factory. They hummed in harmony the same tune they sang earlier. They were truly happy to return back to the work they loved. Charlie went out to assess the damage. Standing on the front step of the factory, he, his eyes slowly scanned the horizon. His eyes began to flood with tears. He wept as he surveyed the destruction caused by the general public. The white cigarette candy fences that surrounded the garden were completely broke down, as well as the area containing the uh, organically edible candy treats that made the garden such a splendid place to visit. Although the fences were extra high, the public literally ate their way through the barriers. The gingerbread house had gaping holes in the walls. Everything on the playground had been leveled to the ground. 
It looked as if a bomb had hit his candy garden. He felt defeated and depressed. He asked himself a hard question. Is this the end to all the rest? End of chapter 5. On to chapter 6.